Above the roofs of the town, vast, dominating and still, stand the cathedral. The craftsman who built it wanted it to be very noble and very beautiful. It was the house of God. Sculptors and workers in stone ornamented its doorways and frontals with lifelike figures and well-known scenes, stories from the Bible as saw them. They did this to make it even more magnificent, but also to make it human and familiar, for it was the refuge of man. who came to it, the kings and the princes and the great ones of this world, to the humble and the lowly, to the old and the young, the cathedral spoke. It was a Bible in stone, where the church taught a gospel in pictures that every man could understand, even if he had never learned to read. children listening to a master will ask him to repeat a favorite story. So here there was a story that above all others touched the hearts of believers. Listen then to this story with the heart of a child. Listen to the most beautiful story in the world. Listen. At Nazareth in Galilee there lived a young woman whose name was Mary. One day, perhaps while she was spinning wool, an angel appeared before her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And the angel told Mary that she would bear a son who would be called the Son of God. And Mary answered, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And the angel departed, and Mary rejoiced. A little while later, Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was with child. And as soon as Mary greeted her, Elizabeth cried out, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. So Mary knew that what the angel had told her was true. And these two women, who had been chosen for such great things, prayed together to the Lord. Shepherds are filled with joy, and a great light shines in the sky, and a choir of angels is heard. Noel, Bethlehem, the humble village to which Mary came, tired with her journey, and where she knew that her hour had come. Noel, a manger, a poor stable. What a resting place this for the holy child. Noel, Noel, the savior of mankind is born. The wise men and kings who could read the portents of the heavens saw the star and came from the east to this stable to adore him whose crown was to be more glorious than all the crowns of the earth. They came bearing rich gifts. For him they placed their crowns and humbly offered to Jesus gold and frankincense and myrrh. It was written in the law of the Lord that the eldest son of a family, on the eighth day after his birth, should be taken to the temple and consecrated to God. Mary, obeying the law, carried her newborn son to the temple of the Lord. There was Simeon, an old man so devout and full of faith that God had granted him to see the Savior before his death. And seeing Jesus, he cried, 
Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. Then Simeon spoke prophetically of the child's wondrous destiny and of tragedy to come. Will she ever forget this grave warning, this young mother who watches over her child and sees him smiling? Already the life of Jesus was threatened. His fame disturbed the tyrant Herod, who feared the infant king. Not knowing for certain where to find him, he ordered his soldiers to slaughter all the male children of Bethlehem of less than two years of age. But Jesus and Mary escaped in time, for an angel had warned Joseph, and they went away riding on an ass across the trails of the desert to the banks of the Nile. After the death of Herod, they returned to Galilee, and Jesus grew up in Nazareth. But the Spirit of the Lord was on him. One day, when he was 12 years of age, his parents found him in the temple conversing with the doctors, who were astonished at his understanding and his answers. John the Baptist was preaching to the people on the banks of the Jordan. Jesus, who was now 30 years of age, came to him and went down into the water, and John baptized him. And a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world. Then Jesus went alone into the wilderness, and the devil tempted him offering Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, if he would but worship him. But Jesus said, Get thee behind me, Satan. So the devil failed to tempt the Son of God. The time was now come for Jesus to give to men his message of love and peace. Across Judea and all Galilee, his fame increased, and crowds came to him to young and old, to rich and poor, to the Jews of Palestine or strangers from afar, to all alike, he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Judge not, that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Love one another. At Cana there was a marriage, Mary was there with Jesus, and when they wanted wine, his mother said to him, They have no wine. Then Jesus caused some stone water pots to be filled with water, and when they poured it out, it was made wine. Jesus performed many more miracles, the loaves and the few small fishes that fed a multitude, the paralyzed man to whom he said, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And here the most wonderful of all the miracles. Lazarus was dead and had lain in his tomb for four days. Jesus went there and said, Lazarus, come forth. And the man that had been dead arose and came forth, still bound with grave clothes. To help him with his task, Jesus chose twelve disciples, twelve men of the people like himself. And Simon Peter, he told that on him he would build his church, and that he would give him the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Then he told his disciples to go and preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand, and to heal the sick. Why is there such a crowd of people gathered along the road to Jerusalem? Some climb up into the olive trees and settle in the branches. For what are they waiting so expectantly, so reverently? They're waiting for Jesus and his disciples who are going into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They welcome him with cries of joy and throw their cloaks under the feet of the ass on which he rides, saying, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord.
But Jesus knew that his hour was near and that soon he would have to leave his disciples. So he gathered them together for the feast of the Passover and he broke bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he offered them a cup of wine and said, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood. And he told them, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. And the disciples wondered who it could be. And John, who was leaning against his breast, asked, Lord, is it I? Jesus said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Judas, who had already in his heart betrayed him, asked, Lord, is it I? Thou hast said, replied Jesus. And he added, That thou doest, do quickly. Judas went out and hurried to the waiting chief priests who hated Jesus. Judas had said to them, What will ye give me, and I will deliver him unto you? They gave him thirty pieces of silver. Thirty pieces of silver. Thirty pieces of silver. Led by Judas, the soldiers went to the Mount of Olives where Jesus was praying, and Judas betrayed his master with a kiss. The soldiers came near to seize Jesus. Simon, with a blow of his sword, cut off the ear of one of them. But Jesus healed the man, saying to Simon, Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? So he did not resist them. They took him to the Roman governor, who ordered him to be scourged. Then he abandoned him to the Jews, because he could see no fault in him. The soldiers mocked Jesus and put on him a purple robe and gave him a reed for a scepter and a crown of thorns. They laughed at him scornfully and called him King of the Jews and spat on him. It is said that amongst those who followed him on the road to Golgotha was a woman whose name was Veronica and she came up to him to wipe his face which was covered with dust and blood, and the holy face was imprinted on the linen. Jesus fell exhausted under his burden. Some went towards him to help him to his feet, and Simon of Cyrene helped him to carry his cross. Thus they came to Calvary. They nailed him on the cross between two thieves, and the crowd reviled him. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. And one of the thieves taunted him, saying, If thou be the Son of God, save thyself and us. But the other thief said humbly, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto thee, this day shalt thou be with me in paradise. At the foot of the cross of Jesus was Mary his mother and his beloved disciple John and other holy women. And Jesus said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And to John, behold thy mother. And from that day, John sheltered Mary and took care of her. From the sixth to the ninth hour, Jesus was in agony on the cross. 
Mary was overcome by her great grief and was supported in the arms of John. And about the ninth hour, Jesus bowed his head and died. Joseph of Arimathea was given permission by Pilate to take away the body of Jesus. With Mary and Nicodemus, he took him down from the cross to take him to the sepulchre, which he had hewn out of the rock. third day, Martha and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came bringing with them spices to embalm the body of Jesus. They found the tomb empty. An angel in shining raiment appeared to the frightened women and said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here but is risen. Go your way. Tell his disciples. Mary Magdalene remained weeping before the empty tomb. Suddenly a voice said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? But she did not recognize Jesus until he spoke her name, Mary. And falling to her knees, she answered, Master. On many occasions after that, he appeared to his disciples. On the road to Emmaus, Two of them did not realize who it was that traveled by their side and who sat down at their table. It was only when he broke bread and blessed it that their eyes were opened and they knew him. Thomas refused to believe the miracle, and Jesus, to convince him, said, Reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless but believing. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. On the fourth day after his resurrection, Jesus called his disciples together at Bethany and blessed them and said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. The last words that Jesus spoke to men were of lasting comfort and surpassing joy. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world.